Hello again, Tom Mahon here from Benetti. Wrapping up our four part session on asset management and the IBM Maximo product line, we talked about basic asset management, the core product, the industry solutions and add-ons. Now we're gonna take it to a whole new level. Let's take it to the Maximo application suite, which is where the future is for IBM's Maximo product line. Over the years, IBM and others have developed capabilities above and beyond the traditional enterprise asset management solutions. The Internet of Things was a hot topic for a couple of years. So how do we actually in real time monitor what's going on with our assets? How do we visually inspect assets where we're not up close and personal looking at things? How do we look at the overall health of an asset? How do we start to run those analytics? What are the factors we need to consider? And most importantly, how do we get to predictive maintenance? We want to know when something's going to break with a high degree of confidence so that we can take care of it before it does. We can have planned outages instead of emergency outages. And as our customers moved along this journey and tried to look at how and where they could bring in these new capabilities, they ran into some problems, quite frankly. IBM licensed all these different products with different license metrics. They often had different delivery platforms and different underlying technologies, and it became very complex to do the integration for each individual customer. So what IBM has decided to do is to take that Maximo that we know and love and move it to an entire new generation of product. We took Maximo and we put it onto a common operating environment called Red Hat OpenShift. Now the OpenShift is a containerized platform. It works with Kubernetes technologies and all of those application support technologies. It gives us a common interface to the operating environment. IBM has had their Cloud Pack for Data for some years, so we decided to build on top of Cloud Pack for Data and then take all of these individual capabilities that have been developed over many years and put them into containers integrate them with each other on a common delivery platform that allows our customers to bring the correct portions of the solution to bear when they're ready as they go through that journey to predictive maintenance. So what was Maximo Asset Management is now the Manage application on the application suite. And then we also have applications for monitor, health predict, visual inspection, and assist all delivered on a single common platform, which can then be deployed on cloud, on AWS, IBM, Azure, or on local premises, on your own servers. It's up to the customer to decide what's the most effective delivery model for the solution. But we have a single software suite that delivers all those capabilities. So our chiclet diagram that we call it has now been expanded. The industry solutions and add-ons that we talked about in our previous sessions they're all still there. All those capabilities of Maximo don't change. They have just been ported into containerized platforms for the delivery of that functionality. But the layer on top of that, it now has the applications. Manage is the Maximo application. Monitor, health, predict, visual inspect, and assist are the additional applications that we're going to talk about here today. What is Monitor? We've learned over time that more and more of these assets are spewing out data. So how do we capture that data? How can we reduce downtime? How can we cut the time required for outages, increase production of our solutions, our products, our outputs, if you will. So enterprise scale monitoring is very, very common. How do we ingest all of that data? We don't want to put all that data into our Maximo database. So we have to have the right kinds of tools to ingest high volumes of streaming data, very small little data records, but a whole lot of them come in from a whole lot of different places. And then we need to search through that data and start to look for anomalies. And when we find that data anomaly, then we can kick that over to the manage application, Maximo, to take action against it and see what needs to be done. Is that a corrective? Is that a preventive? Do we have a developing problem? Has something already broken? Those types of things we can look at. And then we can go back and look at the historical trends and we can truly monitor in real time what's going on with all of our assets in the field in an integrated environment. From there, we can start to say, well, what's the health of our assets? Now, this is an interesting challenge because different classes of assets have different factors to consider when you're looking at the health of an asset. When you look at a truck, miles driven is very important, but engine hours is very important for the engine itself, but maybe not for the rest of the truck. So what we do is come up with a capability to allow customers to model what inputs they want to consider for each class of assets. 
that may be three or four or five different factors that they consider, and then they can weight those factors. Which one is half of the consideration? You know, engine hours run is half of the consideration on an engine. Uh, the temperature that it operates at, the number of times it went out of bounds, the total maintenance cost, all these other factors may not be as important. So when we're gonna rate those individual factors, we then weight the ratings to roll together to an asset health score. And we can then look at the efficacy of our processes and our systems and the life and health expectancy for the asset. So we can, again, get into that mode of planning ahead, not having failures, and taking proactive action to keep our asset base operational. And then the ultimate goal on all of that is prediction. And that is to take all of that data and start to do some AI-based analytics to say, how do we build out a true predictive model that will give us insights going forward, sometimes for months, sometimes for years, on what the asset life is going to look like over time. Many of our customers require and are very dependent upon very critical assets that take a long time to procure or in many cases build, get deployed, and then put out into a new location to take an existing asset that's going to fail offline. We need to be cognizant of that lead time. So the predictive tools are really intended to focus on that type of a business problem. You know something's going to eventually go. How far in advance do you need to start taking actions on that so that you can minimize downtime for your operations? So these Watson tools that are all part of that cloud pack for data, they're all there to help us build these models and start to really stretch out and say, what do we do to learn from this tremendous amount of data that we're capturing and all these other capabilities? Visual inspection is on a little different path, but it's a very, very key piece of the future of Maximo. Many of our customers in manufacturing and other industries have monitors and cameras set up in many places, and in many places they're adding more, but they don't want to pay people to sit and look at that monitor the whole time. Or, in some cases, people can't see the anomalies that the manufacturer wants to catch. If you look at a vehicle manufacturer, they don't really want to pay somebody to look at all of the paint that comes across on all the hoods that are going to be put on the cars. Not only would that be ridiculously boring, but they can't see on many of the anomalies that the manufacturer would like to detect. On the other hand, the cameras today have very high resolution graphics. They can scan that hood, take a whole bunch of images, compare that to the standards that we've trained the model to work with, and find out if there's anomalies. And if they are, pull that piece of equipment or that piece of hood offline and go get it fixed before we ship it in a customer product. We had one customer who builds furniture and they don't have people looking at the furniture, the finished product. The first person to look at the finished product is the person taking it out of the box on their living room floor. Set up cameras around all of the manufacturing line, look for surprises and anomalies as you inspect the furniture as it goes by, and hopefully catch those anomalies before they're in the customer's home. And now it becomes a significant problem to return, repair, and deal with customer dissatisfaction. So there's a lot of use cases for visual inspection. Another major one that we've really leveraged is when you've got things like large bridges where climbing up on the bridge is a mountaineering activity and doing the inspection can take months. On the other hand, we can put a high-res camera on a drone, give it a grid pattern to go inspect the bridge and take all that data and analyze it in a couple hours and the safety of a lab room as opposed to having mountaineers up on a 300 foot tall bridge. So there's visual inspections, a ton of capabilities to help people in a lot of lines of business to actually analyze what's going on in their asset base. We've talked about Maximo Mobile a couple times. It's a very key part of the application suite. One of the key pieces that I'll touch on is when it comes to licensing the application suite, it's no longer a separate license. Now all of your users can have access to mobility across the board and it's a much more robust set of capabilities that's being built out and there's more and more applications coming onto the screen at, as time goes forward. Scheduler has also been enhanced significantly for the application suite. The schedule optimizer is part of it. I know we've talked about that a couple of times but now again it's included in the licensing model. It's no longer a separate product and you can just go ahead and install it and move forward with your users. When we talk mobile, there's one other perspective on this that, that uh, IBM has delivered 
and that is the assist. The intent here is to get smarter for the technician in the field. How do we assist that technician? We're very aware of the fact that people are using a Google search, for example, to go out and determine what do I do to deal with the situation I'm dealing with on a repairable asset. How about if we refine that search to say we know where the maintenance manual is, we know the model number and serial number based on the barcode that you scanned. How about we go get the specific one that's applicable to exactly what you're trying to repair so we make sure you have the right one very quickly. And then while we're at it, how do we connect you up with an expert that may be in another state but is able to do a real-time interface with you on the camera to look at your documents, to look at your asset, to give you advice on how to accelerate that repair. So this is a new set of capabilities. It's also available on the application suite that takes the mobile capabilities to an entirely new level. So those are the applications that are added to the suite above and beyond the core Maximo functionality. This also introduces an entire new, entirely new licensing model to Maximo. We no longer license by users, full, limited, and express, and add-ons, and industry solutions, and all of that complexity. Now, IBM licenses application points. It's a single metric. You purchase a pool of licenses on either a subscription license or a perpetual license, and you're given a bucket of app points. Then you are able to use those app points in three different ways. Two of those are users concurrent users and authorized users, and one of them is the install. I'll start with the install. Certain industry solutions and add-ons require the set aside and reservation of a number of points for permanent reservation to have that application add-on in your environment. Not a lot of those, normally not a lot of points, but there are some things that require reservation of points. The core product itself does not require install points but some of the add-ons do. As far as users go, users can be set up in two different models. First off, the level of access that a user has is determined by their security groups, and we'll talk about that in a second. Then they can be set up to be concurrent users or authorized users. Concurrent users log into the system, they borrow some points while they are connected to the environment. When they're done, they log off and they put those points back in the pool for somebody else to use. Authorized users, on the other hand, have points assigned to them permanently. So they are reserved much like the installs. You need that especially for your administrators and for people who are in the system extensively throughout the day. Authorized users take about a third as many points as concurrent users. So we don't want somebody who's in the system all day to use three times as many points as a concurrent user but we don't, somebody, don't want somebody who's just logging in once or twice a day to be reserving points 24 by seven. This gives you the ability to optimize your points utilization based on how people use your software. Now, how many points are we talking about? There's different levels of users, self-service, limited, base, and premium. Self-service doesn't require any points, but all they can do is request services and do some very lightweight monitoring of stuff that's in Maximo. Limited users can do three managed modules and they can access the monitor and they can access assist. Base users can access all of the base Maximo applications, including system configuration and health. Premium users are those that are into our industry solutions and some of the key complicated add-ons like HSC and configuration manager or those that are in predict or the ones that are building the training models for visual inspection. And then the ribbon across the bottom of the screen talks about the number of points required for install of certain add-ons. The ERP connectors and the visual inspection and the schedule optimizer, for example. These are the new capabilities that are now available on this Maximo application suite. As you work through the process to upgrade or trade up your licenses, from your existing licenses user-based on Maximo Asset Management, you'll be able to look at how and where to deploy these new capabilities to take you to the next level. The objective here isn't just to put you on a different delivery platform, it's to give you a new set of capabilities that really help you grow and make your organization much more efficient. And we as the Benetti team are very interested in helping you go through that process so to work with you on what your objectives are, what your pain points are, and where and how we can help you uh, get to a better operating level to be more reliable, to be more efficient, to reduce downtime, 
cut down accidents, and hopefully over time improve your posture as an organization. Thank you very much for these sessions. I hope you found them useful, and we look forward to talking with you in the future.